Hey everybody, Deathstalker here. So you can tell by the fact I'm in the garage, the weather's not fit for motorcycling. Matter of fact, we've got snow, ice pellets, and right now we're getting freezing rain. So I'm pretty certain motorcycle season is done for me. So let's talk about the last MotoGP race of the season. And of course, I'll put the name of it up here, but it was in uh, Portugal. Now this is the first time the MotoGP bikes have actually raced at this particular track in Portugal. It's currently on the World Superbike calendar, so fans of the Superbike racing would actually recognize the circuit. And it is a very beautiful circuit, and more importantly, the weather was absolutely fantastic the entire weekend. So no threat of rain, no threat of uh, extreme heat. It was perfect racing weekend and a great way to wind up the racing season. Now the nice thing was, because it was a brand new circuit, they gave these guys an extra 70 minute uh, practice sessions on the Friday so the riders and the teams could get used to the racing on the new circuit. And uh, Simon Crawford this time is able to do a, an on-track demo ride around the track and I'll make certain I'll put a link to that. And they also have on board footage of uh, Jack Miller on, on the track as well. So I'll make certain I put links to that in the description of this video. So for practice, really not too many followers. Everyone was more or less behaving. Uh, the only thing that was a face palm moment was uh, Johan Zarco was riding his, uh, his Ducati down the straightaway and the engine blew. Now like a, like a good, good racer with a lot of uh, knowledge of the rules is he immediately got off the racing line and moved off to the runoff area that runs alongside the track. And then he pulled down to the end of the, the runoff area, stopped, and then for some reason, which I have no clue why, he decided to drive across the track that is actually a blind corner to the oncoming racers. So if they were coming across at speed, wouldn't really have time to react, and the racers wouldn't either. And more importantly, his bike was leaking oil. He then proceeded to try to run up the, to drive up the pit lane before he got stopped by the officials. Surprisingly, he wasn't given a penalty, though there were several riders who were actually questioning that. For qualifying, Miguel Oliveira, who by the way is from Portugal and the hometown hero, was the fastest in qualifying and got the pole. Franco Morbidelli was almost as fast and was second. Jack Miller was just slightly behind Franco. And Cal Crutchlow, who was in his final race, was without a question of a doubt the fastest Honda. But surprisingly, Stefan Brattle who normally is in the back 10 of, the, of uh, qualifying, was actually sixth. Now for the race, the lights went out, Miguel got the lead, and he essentially checked out. Uh, his uh, lap times for the first several laps of the race, no one could match, and he very quickly pulled a four or five second lead on everyone else. Franco Morbidelli was trying to follow him as fast as he could and actually had overcooked his tires trying to keep up and had to back off a hair. And Jack Miller locked in behind Franco and proceeded to follow him around. Now the Yamahas, Fabio Quattrolara, uh, Maverick Vinales, and Valentino Rossi, they've had problems with qualifying all weekend long and they just were at the back of the grid. Fabio was a little bit closer to the front because he was in the second row and he just went backwards the entire race. Uh, I can't remember exactly where he finished, but he, f he finished quite a ways down and he, he had just a weekend to forget. Now Cal Quetzal and Paul Espargo were working their way up. Uh, Cal eventually had gotten up to about fourth place. And then he made a mistake and ran wide and then he made another mistake later on and he eventually started dropping down. But he did actually finish the race. Paul Espargo had several very close calls with the, you know, with uh, almost losing the front end on the bike where he decided to just uh, slow down a little bit and settle, settle for fourth place, which actually makes him the highest point scorer of uh, all the KTM riders, even though he never managed to win. Now, Jean Mir, who last weekend had won the world championship, just had a horrible weekend. Uh, they had some sort of electronic gremlin with the bike 
and uh, he qualified, I think it was like 18th or 19th. And when it came to the start of the race, he just wasn't going anywhere. And then very early in the race, he was uh, closing very quickly on Peko Bagnaglia. And his front wheel or fairing struck Peko's right arm. And Peko actually had to pull off the track. Peko didn't crash, but he had to pull off the track. And when it came into the, the pits, uh, he was in intense pain because apparently the impact had dislocated his shoulder. And even though it had slipped back into place, he was still in a great deal of pain. Uh, Jean Mir almost had another collision with another rider, uh, I believe it was Brad Binder, a few laps later, and again was falling further and further behind. And eventually he pulled off the track and retired with some sort of electronic gremlin with the bike where it just wasn't producing any power. So although he's a world champion, he could quite happily forget, forget about that weekend. Brad Binder was doing fairly well, and then uh, he overcooked it in one of, the, one of the corners and actually crashed out. Alex Marquez, who had qualified about 17th, I think it was, had managed to get himself up to ninth place and actually had a very strong finish. However, that was not enough points to give him the Rookie of the Year title, and that went to Brad Binder. When it came down to the end of the race, nobody had any chances of catching Miguel. He was so far ahead. However, Franco Morbidelli had Jack Miller right on his rear rear tire, and Jack was following him around. On the last lap, a few corners from the finish line, Jack made his move. He outbraked Frank into the corner, blocked him so he couldn't pass him, and then made certain he had everything covered to actually win the race. And Franco complimented him on doing such a good job on preventing him any opportunity to pass him back. So that's it for another MotoGP season. Uh, things kick off again in February when they start having their uh, test sessions. And depending on how things go in the world, hopefully we'll be back to a regular schedule for 2021. Anyways, Death Stalker, signing off.